Capturing portraits at subculture events made me a better photographer. Let me explain. So on this video, I'm going to be talking about why I shoot subcultures and why it has made me a better photographer. Subculture. It's stories that are very striking, very dark and edgy. Now, there are plenty of events out there from live concerts, uh, performances, uh, live shows. But personally, I like capturing subculture events. The reason why I am able to cut and shape light on location. And these events allow me to bring specific tools for these events. I'm gonna show you a quick behind the scenes on one of the videos I was captured. So here, it, the patron was able to capture me photographing this model. We were able to use an auditorium and I have stands, I have C stands, I have a light up here that's overhead from talent. And I usually have some backlighting back there, but I didn't turn it on. But that's just some of the gear. But on this shoot, I had more gear that I had because I'm able to cut and shape light for each individual on a different lighting scheme. I change it up constantly on my lighting scheme and it makes it even more cooler for myself and for the one being photographed and they really appreciate that. Some of the subcultures I specifically photograph are from vampire events to the labyrinth to uh, the luchas to day of the dead and those are some of the samples I photograph and I'm going to show you guys some of the work I've done throughout the past and the reason why I love photographing them. I'm very particular in the subculture I go to. I make sure I network ahead of time. I get to know the, the community. I get to know the people uh, by introducing myself. Uh, there's something about subculture that brings a different element and experience and a learning process. Uh, majority of times, photographers will bring just a camera, a flash, or some type of reflector. Now, those are great pictures, but personally, myself, I always like to challenge myself in my work. So if I'm able to network with these communities, I ask them ahead of time if I'm able to plug in my lights. Majority of my lights are mostly film lighting and it requires some kind of a battery or some kind of plug-in because sometimes a plug-in gives me more power in the light and allows me to control that light in a specific way. And they actually allocate a specific location for me to photograph these patrons. And the beauty of these events is they come dressed up in their costume, in their makeup, in their character. That is the reason why I love shooting certain subculture events. It's because they come here to present themselves in a whole nother fashion. And I'm going to come and bring myself and present myself in a whole nother fashion and bring in 
professional grip and lighting and camera. This pretty much gives me a mobile studio location shoot. When I'm on location, people are definitely amazed by the amount of uh, uh, lighting that I'm able to provide for them. I get a lot of people that fall in line just to be able to be photographed uh, through my mini location studios. And I feel honored that I'm able to capture them because the way I set up some of my subculture photography, I do take the time to customize the lighting for each person or couple or group in order to have a specific lighting setup for them. And they see that. They see that the fact that I'm not just a photographer with a flash. I'm out here, I'm gonna cut and shape and change the color according to your look to kind of accentuate the colors that they bring out from their costumes or their makeup. They see that as a, a real opportunity to be able to come into my studio setup and be able to photograph. Unfortunately, I don't get to everybody, but majority of times people are in line on these events. Let me take you back and some of the work I've done in the past. And I'm gonna go through my Dropbox so you kind of get a sense of my work. I was messing around with with flashlight photography. I wanted to show people that you don't need to bring expensive type of gear to be uh, in order to be able to capture quality images. So I brought specific flashlights in order to cut and shape light on these events. And as you can see, it's a different kind of look with flashlight. You know, uh, this model right here. You know, there's a hard source flashlight in the back and I'm just using uh, headlights uh, just to kind of up, up point up, you know, that kind of style. Um, so these were just basic flashlights being used. No other types of lighting were used. It's not the best kind of lighting, but the fact that I was able to go there and be able to plug these little lights in certain spaces even backlighting you know makes it real interesting and the reason why this makes you a better photographer is whenever you come into a subculture event majority of the times the event will be very dark or completely dark now it is my job to make sure i expose that and to create some kind of dramatic image out of that so when i come into a space that's dark i'm already looking at the texture, the model, the location, and where I can place certain lighting. You know, this one right here, this model, I had like a flashlight coming from the, the right side of his cheek this way. And then there's backlighting on this side. So I was able to achieve that just through flashlight. When you start photographing and using flashlight, you get a, a sense of understanding of how the light comes out through the images and it helps you see you know even though it is a harsh light it goes well for the dramatic look and feel so that was one of my first experiments then i started bringing my flashlight to other events so this is an event called dark circus you notice there's still harsh lighting on these images but it makes it work and the fact that the event or club had a fog machine made it even more dramatic so that added a little bit more effect to my my images and I was able to uh, use a corner where I was close to the DJ booth and I wasn't being bothered and it's a very dark area and I was able to light it just utilizing flashlights and so here's a few more samples out of that this is one of my favorite out of that session And now I'm going to take you to other photographs where I've mixed flashlight with battery powered LEDs and RGB light and sometimes gels. So I was able to rig light up above and that allowed me to have different style of lighting. Okay, in this particular image, I actually used a high powered um, tungsten lighting, which is called a Lico. And because the event allows me to plug in, I was able to achieve this type of effect of a backlighting in combination of the fog from the event. This turned out really cool. Being able to control the lighting and the colors makes a big difference while you're shooting at an event. So almost every 
every patron that came through has a different lighting scheme. So I try to change it up for every person that comes in or every uh, group that goes in the, the, the frame. For instance, if there's a big group, there's times that I feel like I don't have enough lighting. So this is the labyrinth. This was uh, purely shot with a flashlight on location. You know, the location I was able to use because it's already illuminated with the ambience type of lighting. And with that, the models and their costume just pop even more. And just utilizing flashlight, uh, I was able to achieve quick photography and be able to move around different spaces. So here's one that's just pure flashlight pointing at the, um, the model's face from the top and having a little bit of backlighting and the location already had lighting in this uh, waterfall section. So flashlight photography, definitely a real interesting way to learn if you want to explore photography on a cheap, um, if you don't have a budget to buy lighting, but try to buy rechargeable batteries so that way you don't burn through cash buying batteries constantly. This is a Dwarian ball. I was able to utilize just a section from a third floor uh, auditorium. And I try to play it out as if, um, you know, these patrons are coming from a, a performance and they're exiting or entering curtain reveal. So that kind of helped me out in the look and feel. And I was able to, to light this space and real stunning stuff right here. I mean, some portraits on location. I mean, it feels like you were able to capture these images on, in the studio. This is the beauty of being able to bring the right tools in an event where it's just uncontrolled chaos. Mass amounts of people walking through your, your photo sessions and you know it's unpredictable but when you come up with these stunning images on location and these challenges this is why it makes you a better photographer. You understand lighting, you understand the location, you understand texture, you understand framing, you understand so many things on the spot that you're constantly thinking on your feet. What am I gonna do with this type of lighting? What am I gonna set this up with um, as far as grip? Well, how am I gonna shoot this? You know, those are the things that you're coming up on the spot that just makes your muscle memory um, work even more and you're learning something new as you go. Uh, this is more of a day of the dead type of shoot, you know, and so. Like I said, you know, these people come in ready just with their outfits, makeup. It just makes the image pop even more. So a few more examples from this series. Um, you know, a lot of the times these pictures aren't perfect because you are shooting in advance. So you're going to have to realize that, you know, you're not shooting in the studio where you have some limitations in these events and having a very different type of look of your pictures compared to another event photographer i think you know you really stand out here is one of the latest ones i worked at before covid um some of my favorite ones um because you're looking at it through dropbox um these are not the high res completely when you're looking at it in the desktop and and f you know, with the full file you'll get the full resolution yeah even on the streets you know you're able to capture some interesting portraits uh, utilizing the tools and when i lug my gear it's usually on rolling cases and i have you know my lights in there and i'm able to pull them out easily plug in a battery and be able to shoot something on the spot it's more gear i have to lug and times like this i have to lug cases and and stands that are very uncomfortable bringing them up and down the stairs but in the end once you are capable of capturing beautiful stunning images in these events uh, the rewards are absolutely stunning all right i'm gonna conclude here on this video piece on how i became a better photographer shooting at subculture events uh, that's just a quick recap on on how i did it if you have any questions comment down below don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe i will see you on the next video peace